Good day, everyone. My name is Mr. Chisum, and today we'll be looking at the histology of the nervous tissue. Nervous tissue is one of the tissues that we have in the body. Remember the last time I told us that the tissues that we have in the body are the epithelial tissue, the connective tissue, the muscle tissue, and finally the nervous tissue. So we'll be looking at the histology of the nervous tissue. Nervous tissue are defined as tissue that are responsible of causing the body to respond to a change or respond to changes in its internal or external environment. So the nervous tissue make the body to respond to changes in either the internal or its external environment. What this tissue does is that they carry information from the receptors to the central nervous system and also from the central nervous system to the body or to the effectors. So, having understand the meaning of the nervous tissue and what the nervous tissue does, let us look into the nervous tissue proper. So, tissue are defined as a group of or a collection of similar cells that are specialized to do a specific or to do particular functions. Having understand what tissue means, now the nervous tissue are grouped or they are grouped into similar cells. You can see these cells, the neuron, which are the functional units, and also the neuroglia, which are the supporting cells. The neuroglia can be found in both the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The neuroglia that are found in the central nervous system are known as the central neuroglia. And they include the oligodendrocytes, the astrocytes, the microglia, and the ependymal cells. Then we have the neuroglia or the glial cells that are found in the peripheral nervous system. They include, or example of these are the Schwann cells and the satellite cells. Then let's look at the neurons proper. The neurons are defined as the functional units of a nerve or of a nerve, and the neuron can also be called the nerve cells. So there are about 10 billion neurons in the body. There are about 10 billion neurons in the body, and the neurons are classified based on their function and also based on their structure. Irrespective of this classification, the neurons have similar features like the uh, cell body or the soma, the dendrites, and also the axon. We'll be coming into that. We'll be looking at that later. But let's see the classification of the neuron. The classification of the neuron based on their functions. We have the sensory neuron. The sensory neuron are defined as neurons that carries information or transmit information from the receptor to the central nervous system. Then we have the motor neuron. The motor neuron carries information from the central nervous system down to the to the body. Then we have the interneuron. The interneuron are known as those type of neuron that form an integrating or a communicating network between the sensory neuron and the motor neuron. So these are the classification of neuron based on their function. Looking at the classification based on the structure of the neuron. Here we first of all have the multipolar neurons. Multipolar neurons are defined as the type of neuron that have the cell body, have one long axon, and have two or more dendrites. This neuron, example of this neuron are the, the motor neuron and also the interneuron. Then we have the bipolar neuron. The bipolar neuron are the type of neuron that they are, that have cell body and they have one long axon and one dendrite. Example of this uh, type of neuron is the sensory neurons. Then we have the unipolar neuron or the pseudopolar neuron. They are the type of neuron that they don't have dendrites. They have cell body. They don't have dendrite, but they have one uh, axon that divides. And this type of neuron can be found in the, it can be found in the retina. It can also be found in the inner ear. Then we have the anazonic neuron. 
the anazonic neuron are defined as the type of neuron that have the cell body they do not have the axon but they have different dendrites so these are the classification of neuron based on their structure then before we see the features of the neuron or the structure of the neuron in particular let's first of all look at the synapses the synapses are defined as junctions or gap that are found between one neuron to another neuron you know on a normal neuron communicates with one another so the communication or the junction or the gap that are found between one neuron and the another neuron is known as synapses and we have different types of this uh, communication or different type of this uh, linking of one neuron to another neuron we have the axodendritic uh, synapse this simply means that the axon of one neuron is in communication with the dendrite of another neuron then we have the axo axonal it means that the axon of one neuron is in communication with the axon of another neuron then we have the axo somatic the axon of one neuron is in communication with the cell body or the soma of another neuron we have the dendro axonic it means that the dendrite of one neuron is in synapses with the axon of another neuron then we have the dendrodendritic meaning that the dendrite of one neuron synapses with the dendrite of another neuron then we have the somatodendritic meaning that the cell body of one neuron is in synapse with the dendrite of another neuron then we have the somatosomatic it means that the cell body of one neuron is in synapse with the cell body of another neuron so these are the different types of synapses then let's see the features or the structure of the neuron so let's look at the structure or the features that are found in the neuron like i told us earlier every neuron has common feature like the dendrites the cell body and the axon they will be looking at other features that make up a neuron so first of all let's see the dendrites you can see these short branching processes are known as the dendrites and the dendrites allow information it, it allow information to come towards the cell body so that is what the dendrite does then you can see the cell body the cell body contains the nucleus it contains the mitochondria it contains the golgi apparatus in the plasmic reticulum and other cellular organelles that help in the functioning of a neuron then we can you can see the axon this is the axon the axon is this long process it is long this long process that extends from the cell body down to the terminals so axon allow information to be transmitted away from the cell body so apart from this axon we can also see other features that are found in the within the axon you can see the axon helix the axon helix is the is pyramidal as you can see it is pyramidal in shape and it is the it it is the initial part of the axon so it is the initial part of the axon from the cell body it is the initial part of the axon that continues from the cell body so then we have the myelin sheets you can see the myelin sheets here so these are the myelin sheets the myelin sheet helps to increase the speed or the velocity of information that is being transmitted through the axon then you can see the node of ramvia this uh hole between one myelin sheet to another myelin sheet is known as the node of ramvia and the node of ramvia allows a uh, ion to enter or leave the neuron then you can also see the the axon terminal which is the terminal part of the axon 
if we've seen the structure of a neuron. Let's go over to the neuroglia. Remember that I told us that neuroglia are supporting cells. Unlike neuron, neuron is the functional unit of the nerve tissue. But neuroglia are supporting cells. That is to say that they, they lie around the neuron to support the neuron. Then, I told us that we have the neuroglia that are found in the central nervous system and also the neuroglia that are found in the peripheral nervous system. I, uh, the neuroglia that are found in the central nervous system are known as the central neuroglia, while that of the peripheral nervous system are known as the peripheral neuroglia. Before I continue, neuroglia can also be called the glia cells. So, let's see the central neuroglia. The central neuroglia are the astrocytes, the oligodendrocytes, and together these two are called the macroglia because they are large cells. Then we have the microglia and we have the ependymal cells. Then coming to the peripheral neuroglia, we have the Schwann cells and we have the satellite cells. So let's uh, see the astrocytes. The astrocytes are defined as star-shaped supporting cells that are found in the central nervous system. And the astrocytes, they are very flat, they are flattened cells, and they have processes. The processes can be long and they can be short. The long processes are known as the fibrous astrocytes, and they can, are mostly found in the white matter of the, of the central nervous system. Then the short processes are known as the protoplasmic astrocytes, and they can be found mostly in the gray matter. Then these processes uh, link or they are united with one another to, that is the process of one astrocyte unite with the process of another astrocyte to that junction. Also, astrocytes communicate with each other through calcium channel. This communication helps in the regulation of synaptic activity it helps in the metabolism of neurotransmitters and it also helps in neuromodulation. Then, the main function of the astrocyte is that it helps in regulating the blood brain barrier. Then, let's see the oligodendrocytes. The oligodendrocytes are rounded, small, and scanty cells that are wrapped around the, the neurons that are found in the central nervous system. It is wrapped around the axon of neurons that are found in the central nervous system. The main function of the oligodendrocyte is that as it wraps around the axon of the neuron that are found in the central nervous system, it helps in the production of myelin sheets. That this myelin sheet now, it helps in the production of myelin sheet that um, wrap around the that wrap around the axon. Then the oligodendrocytes can wrap around more than one axon at the same time. Then let's see the microglia. The microglia are defined as tiny cells. You can see micro. They are very tiny cells that are found in the central nervous system. These cells act as the immune um, defense of the of the neurons. They act as the immune defense of the neurons, and they are developed from the monocytes that invade the brain during theta life. So the main function of these cells is immune uh, defense mechanism of the central nervous system. Then we have the ependymal cells. The ependymal cells are cuboidal or columnar cells that are found in the, the epithelial lining of the ventricle of the brain. And you know the ventricle of the brain contains the cerebrospinal fluid. So these ependymal cells, they contain cilia that help in the movement of the cerebrospinal fluid. And they also contain microvilli that help in absorption. So having seen the fair example of cells that are supporting cells that are in the central nervous system, let's look at the supporting cells that are in the peripheral nervous system. We have the Schwann cell, first of all. The Schwann cells are defined as 
small cells that wrap around the neurons that the axon of neurons that are found in the peripheral nervous system. Know the difference between oligodendrocytes and the Schwann cells. Why oligodendrocytes wrap around the axons of neurons that are found in the central nervous system? Schwann cells wrap around the axon of neurons that are found in the peripheral nervous system. And it is the same function. The, the Schwann cells help in the production of myelin sheets. And the Schwann cells can only wrap around one axon at the same time, unlike the oligodendrocytes can wrap, that can wrap more than one axon at the same time. Then, the satellite cells. The satellite cells are defined as cells that are found in the neurons, uh, uh, in the neurons of the uh, peripheral nervous system. They help in the insulating the nourishment of this neuron. So, before I conclude, let me do a recap of what I've said so far. I said that the nerve tissue are defined as tissues that are responsible to cause the body to respond to changes within its internal and external environment. And the nerve tissue or the nervous tissue are divided into two groups of cells. We have the neuron, which is the functional unit, and we have the neuroglia, which is the supporting cells. Then I told us that the neurons are classified based on their functions and based on their structure. Based on the function, we have the sensory neuron, the motor neuron, and the interneuron or intercalated neuron. And based on the structure, we have the multipolar neuron, the bipolar neuron, the unipolar neuron, and the anasonic neuron. Then I told us that generally the neuron contains the cell body, the dendrites, and the axon. Then coming to neurobia, I told us that the neurobia can be found in both the neurobia are supporting cells. They are supporting cells and they can be found within the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Supporting cells in the sense that they are found within the surrounding the neurons. Then those that are found in the central nervous system are referred to as the central neurobia or central glia cells. And those that are found within the peripheral nervous system are referred to as the peripheral glial cells. Those in the central nervous system are the astrocytes and the oligodendrocytes, which, which are together called the macroglia, which are, because they are large cells. And we also have the microglia, we have the ependymal cells, which are all together found in the central nervous system. Then coming to the peripheral neurobia, we have the Schwann cells and we have the satellite cells. We've come to the end of these teachings. Please, I'd like you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Learn the Chisholm Great. Try as much as possible to uh, like this video, comment on this video, you can comment your questions, then also share this video to your friends. Thank you very much.